the human defense system, this video is all about how the body resists disease and fights infection, and it's part one of three videos. So when we think of the human defense system, we think of building immunity, and immunity is the body's ability to resist infection, and that's a really important definition. The agents that want to cause disease and infection are pathogens, and they're defined as disease-causing organisms. So some bacteria, fungi and viruses would be classed as pathogenic, disease-causing. The human defence system is made up of the general and the specific defence system. The best way to think of the general defence system is the body is a castle surrounded by a moat and these pathogens want to gain entry. So your body is going to have certain systems in place to prevent the entry of every pathogen if possible. And if they do manage to breach the walls or gain entry, it's going to deal with them in the same way. So each of them in the same way. Whereas the specific defence system is a very tailored approach to a specific or particular pathogen and it involves the production of antibodies. So for the rest of the video, we're concerned with the general defence system. We know it's not specific. It's a similar response regardless of what the pathogen is. And most of it is tasked with preventing them entering in the first place. But if they do enter, the general defence system will use inflammation, white blood cells, specialised defence proteins, all used as part of this general defence system. The first part of the general defence system is your skin. It's a physical barrier, so this barrier prevents the entry of pathogens. And it's important that this barrier is not cracked or broken. And so sebum is this oil that's secreted in the skin. It's made by the sebaceous gland and it lubricates the skin. It's one of its functions and this prevents it from drying and cracking. So that's an important role of sebum as well. But sebum also has chemicals in it that prevent the growth of bacteria and fungi also. Next it's mucus. Mucus is a sticky substance that traps pathogens and it's produced by mucous membranes. Mucous membranes are these thin layers of cells that you find in many places of the body lining many of our tracts. For example, our respiratory system is lined with mucous membranes. Our digestive tract is lined with mucous membranes. You encounter them in the reproductive systems, male and female. So in many places you find mucous membranes that produce mucus. One of the things to consider as well that mucus contains lysozyme, this enzyme that breaks down bacterial cell walls. Also remember that the lining of your airways, as well as being lined with mucus producing cells, is also lined with ciliated cells, cells that have these hair like projections, these cilia, and the cilia will waft mucus trapped pathogens upwards to your pharynx, to your throat, where they'll be swallowed, the mucus will be swallowed, and then the pathogens will be dealt with by the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Not only is lysozyme found in mucus, it's also found in tears, sweat and saliva. And remember, lysozyme is an enzyme that breaks down bacterial cell walls. The next part is the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. It kills many microorganisms. Another part of the general defence system is the role played by beneficial bacteria. So there's a mutualism. They get something and we get something. We both benefit. For example, there are bacteria in the vagina that produce lactic acid. This creates a really acidic environment that pathogenic organisms don't like. And also there are those bacteria that live in the large intestine and their presence suppresses the growth of other pathogenic bacteria. So that was the first part of the general defence system. We've gone through all of the barriers, all of the systems in place to prevent the entry of pathogens. The skin, the sebum, lysozyme, mucous membranes and cilia, stomach acid and the presence of beneficial bacteria. So now we have to discuss what happens if barriers are breached. So if the pathogens or toxins enter the blood or the tissues. The general defence system relies greatly on white blood cells, in particular the monocytes. We remember these as being the munchers because they're phagocytes. Phagocytes engulf and destroy other cells, for example bacterial cells or parts of other cells. And when these phagocytes are particularly large, they're macrophages. Macrophages reside in the tissues. They can patrol as well. Some of them can move around looking for invaders and you would find high numbers of them in the lymphatic tissues, for example, in your spleen and your tonsils. 
So this is phagocytosis. In the picture here, you see this big blue macrophage surrounding bacteria. So it's going to engulf them and then secretes enzymes onto them to destroy the bacterial cells. So we now know that white blood cells, in particular monocytes, which are phagocytes, that means they can do phagocytosis. These are crucial to the general defense system but we're particularly concerned with these large phagocytes, these macrophages, and we just remember them because we say big munchers. Inflammation is a very important part of the general defense system. It's generally signified by areas becoming swollen, red, hot, and painful. If you have all over inflammation, it's fever. Why does the area become swollen, red and hot? Well, part of it is down to vasodilation, the arterioles in that area widening, and this brings more blood to the area, and in particular, more white blood cells. And the white blood cells that you're particularly interested in are the macrophages. Next, it's the complement system. Just know its name. It's a system of proteins and when activated, it results in many different actions. For example, some of these proteins will clump together and burst bacterial cells. Others are involved in attracting macrophages. Cells that are infected by viruses release this protein interferon and interferon then travels to uninfected cells warning them they produce chemicals and these chemicals prevent viral replication. So interferon interferes with viral replication. So let's just sum up everything. This slide summarizes the first line of defense, the first part of the general defense system, the barrier system. So you've got the skin, the sebum, the mucus, the cilia, the hydrochloric acid, the lysozyme, that enzyme that breaks down bacterial cell walls, and not forgetting those bacteria that produce lactic acid and those good bacteria in your large intestine. This is a summary of the second line of defense, the second part of the general defense system. So it's firstly all to do with those white blood cells, those monocytes, which are phagocytes, they're munchers, and we're particularly interested in macrophages, and they will do phagocytosis. Then there's the inflammation, basically hot, sore and swollen, all to do with extra blood going to the area, bringing those white blood cells. Then we've got viral infected cells, releasing interferon, which signals to non-infected cells to get ready to prepare. And then we have the complement system, that system of proteins that destroys bacteria and also marks up other pathogens for destruction by macrophages. So at this stage, make sure you can define immunity, define pathogen, that you can give the outline of what the general defense system is. So this is really quick. You can do this on one A4 page. So basically summarize the first line of defense and summarize the second line of defense, a bit like I did at the end of the presentation. And know all about monocytes and what phagocytosis is. The best of luck with all of your revision. The key to doing well is past papers, practicing lots of exam questions and writing your own notes. The best of luck.